After the prince chose Ola, Baroka, seething with envy, refused to accept defeat. She was determined to see Bisi on the throne, not some orphan Kwashior core looking girl who had inexplicably charmed the prince. So, Baroka devised a sinister plan, one that would not only remove Ola from the picture, but also secure her daughter's place as the future queen. Raising her hands and interrupting the celebration, Baroka said, Your Highness, I cannot stand by and watch you make a grave mistake. Surprised, the prince asked, What are you talking about, Baroka? Baroka barked, Ola, she's not who you think she is. She was a very difficult child, always quick to anger, and often disobeyed her parents. The prince replied, Is that so? Baroka nodded her head and said, Yes, your highness, and there's more. One day, in a fit of rage, Ola pushed her mother down a steep hill while they were out gathering firewood. The fall caused severe injuries and she never recovered. Despite all efforts to save her, my sister eventually passed away because of the injuries she got from the fall. With tears in Baroka's <laughs> eyes, she continued, I was heartbroken, your highness. I had to take care of Ola, my niece, even though she is the reason my sister is gone. Tears streamed down Baroka's face as she barked. She's dangerous, your highness. She can't be trusted. Ola stood frozen, her heart pounding in her chest as Baroka's words echoed in her ears. She wanted to speak, to defend herself, but the shock and betrayal left her voiceless, her throat tight with unshed tears. Many years ago, a very slim orphan named Ola moved to Ilunije to live with her aunt, Baroka, and her two daughters, Binta and Bisi. After Ola joined them, Baroka dismissed her maids and made Ola her maid. Ola was burdened with endless chores, which usually stretched into the night. Any time Ola was working and tried to lift something heavy, Baroka would always say, Boomstick. You better not break, oh. Instead of giving a helping hand or calling her daughters to assist. But Ola never complained. Binta, however, would assist Ola whenever her mother and sister were away, as she knew she would face punishment if they discovered she was helping. Ola felt embarrassed many times because she was easily the slimmest person in the town. She usually heard people making bad remarks when she walked past them. Some will say, Oh, my, you small, low. You know the chop. While others, while trying to describe her, will say, You don't see that girl's able to speak today. Ola loved to sew. Ola's mother, Baroka's elder sister, was a famous seamstress in their town before she died, and Ola had learned so much from her. So when Baroka and her daughters were asleep, Ola would make beautiful dresses for herself. Yet, each time she wore her dresses, a wave of sadness always washed over her. For despite the beauty of the dresses, her slender frame never quite filled them out the way she wished. One night, Binta caught her sewing a dress and begged her to make one for her. Ola agreed quickly and made a dress for her. Everyone was amazed with Ola's handwork, so Bisi and Baroka asked for theirs. Ola was happy to see her designs come alive on their bodies because they were more voluptuous than she was. Soon, many people started asking Baroka where she got her clothes and those of her daughters from. But Baroka would claim that they were from a faraway land. During one of the biggest festivals in the town, the king announced a public bouquet and invited every family to come with their daughters for the crown prince to pick a bride. Everyone was happy to hear this, and Baroka bought the finest materials and asked Ola to make beautiful dresses for her daughters. Baroka was convinced one of her daughters was going to be chosen by the crown prince, and the second one would marry the younger prince. She was convinced about this because her girls were known as the most beautiful in Ilunije. One day, Binta and Ola went to the stream. They met two young ladies who loved their dresses and Binta told them Ola made them. 
Ola was so shy when the lady spoke greatly about her designs. One of them asked her if she could make her dress, and she agreed. Ola was invited to the palace and she was confused only to find out the young ladies she met at the stream were the princess and her maid. Ola felt so honored and took her measurements. When she got home, she told Binta about it, who was happy for her. On the other hand, when Baroka heard about it, she was very angry. One night, after Ola had lovingly crafted the princess's dress, Baroka, driven by spite, quietly tore a part of the gown and discarded it on the floor when no one was watching. When Ola discovered the ruined dress, tears streamed down her cheeks and she immediately knew it was Baroka's handiwork. Heartbroken but determined, she secretly mended the dress with Binta's assistance, pouring her soul into every stitch. With a heavy heart but an unwavering spirit, she presented the restored masterpiece to the princess. As she was joyfully exiting the palace, she noticed a group of workers sitting and chatting. Upon seeing her, they began to giggle among themselves. One of them finally shouted after her, Lekpa! Looking mortified, Ola fled to a secluded corner she found and began to sob uncontrollably. Just then, a young man approached her with a gentle demeanor offering her a handkerchief to dry her tears. When she looked up and saw his handsome features, she was taken aback, her heart fluttering with unexpected emotions. Still grappling with her embarrassment, she dashed away without uttering a word of thanks, leaving the young man standing there with a look of concern and surprise. Ola made beautiful dresses for Baroka and her daughters to wear to the wedding. When she wore hers, Baroka jested, it would have been so much better if you were normal. But Binta told her she looked beautiful while Bissy cared more about how perfect hers looked. On the day of the grand banquet, Binta firmly insisted that Ola accompany them, despite Ola's protests. She was still haunted by the memory of her recent embarrassment, and the thought of facing the palace crowd filled her with dread. As they approached the majestic palace, Ola's apprehension grew. The laughter from that day echoed in her ears and she felt a knot in her stomach. Determined not to relive that ordeal, she made a decisive choice. I'll stay here, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the sound of the bustling crowd. And although Binta was worried, she respected her decision. As Ola strolled around the beautiful garden, she found the young man who had given her the handkerchief the other day, painting. She quickly turned to run, but he called out, Hey, Ola! She was shocked he knew her name, and although she was shy, she gently walked up to him. As she gazed at the painting, she exclaimed, It's beautiful! He responded with a gracious thank you. Ola also expressed her gratitude for the handkerchief, to which he simply responded with a smile. He complimented her beautiful dress and mentioned that the princess was wearing the one Ola had crafted for the bouquet. Overjoyed, Ola eagerly went inside to see the princess. When she got to the bouquet, she found out that the crown prince had chosen Binta as his bride and this made her very happy. Then the king came up on stage and announced that the other prince had also chosen a bride. Just then, the young man from the garden walked up to Ola and took her hand. Everyone was shocked while Binta was so happy. You never asked, but I am Femi, he said. After the prince chose Ola, Baroka, seething with envy, refused to accept defeat. She was determined to see Bisi on the throne, not some orphan Kwashior core looking girl who had inexplicably charmed the prince. So, Baroka devised a sinister plan one that would not only remove Ola from the picture, but also secure her daughter's place as the future queen. Raising her hands and interrupting the celebration, Baroka said, Your Highness, I cannot stand by and watch you make a grave mistake. Surprised, the prince asked, What are you talking about, Baroka? Baroka barked, Ola, she's not who you think she is. 
She was a very difficult child, always quick to anger and often disobeyed her parents. The prince replied, Is that so? Baroka nodded her head and said, Yes, your highness, and there's more. One day, in a fit of rage, Ola pushed her mother down a steep hill while they were out gathering firewood. The fall caused severe injuries and she never recovered. Despite all efforts to save her, my sister eventually passed away because of the injuries she got from the fall. With tears in Baroka's eyes, she continued, I was heartbroken, your highness. I had to take care of Ola, my niece, even though she is the reason my sister is gone. Tears streamed down Baroka's face as she barked, She's dangerous, your highness. She can't be trusted. Ola stood frozen, her heart pounding in her chest as Baroka's words echoed in her ears. She wanted to speak, to defend herself, but the shock and betrayal left her voiceless, her throat tight with unshed tears. Meanwhile, the prince, troubled by the grave accusations, found himself tossing and turning in his bed, sleep evading him like a shadow in the night. In the quiet hours before dawn, he made a decision. He couldn't let doubt fester, not when the future of his kingdom and his heart was at stake. The villagers, unaware of the turmoil brewing in the palace, shared with the prince a heart-wrenching tale of Ola's life. Each person he spoke to painted the same picture. Ola was a beacon of kindness and goodness, even in the face of adversity. Some went further, revealing that Baroka, despite being aware of her sister's dire illness, had coldly turned her back on Ola and her ailing mother. Fury ignited within the prince as he absorbed these revelations. The audacity of Baroka's deceit was unfathomable. He gathered everyone in the kingdom and asked Baroka to stand before them. The prince then asked the spiritualist to conduct the trial. The spiritualist instructed Baroka to swear in the name of Ayalala that all she had said about Ola was true. He also reminded her gently that the consequence of lying was insanity. Baroka, knowing the gravity of the situation, hesitated. The fear of the god's wrath and the punishment of madness was too much for her to bear. In a moment of panic, Baroka tried to run away but as she fled, she started mumbling incoherently and acting strangely. The people of the kingdom watched in shock as Baroka, who was highly respected, plunged into madness. Her refusal to swear in the name of their god and her subsequent madness served as a stark reminder of the consequences of deceit and the power of the truth. The prince's actions not only exposed Baroka's lies, but also reinforced the importance of honesty and integrity in the kingdom. Ola's name was cleared, and she was finally able to take her rightful place beside the prince with the full support and admiration of the people.